have we stopped the tick-tock of the clock? Could we really do it? Uh, the answer is uh, yes and no, but I just thought you'd be interested to look at a couple of things. Firstly, um, a drug which has this effect, in theory, on a woman or a man, which is a total body lift at the same time as reducing blood pressure permanently. Uh, you may or may not know that it is in clinical trials. Uh, it has not been as successful as we hoped in humans, but it works very well in mice and rats. What does it do? Well, you give this drug made by Alteon, A-L-T-E-O-N, don't buy the shares because it doesn't work in humans, at least it doesn't work terribly well. Um, but you give this drug to mice and rats. For one month, they lower their blood pressure because it restores the elastin, it seems, in the, in the artery walls, and at the same time, it does the same in the skin. So they have a total body lift. Quite amazing as a side effect. Market value? Who knows? Billions of dollars a year if we could get it to work. Now, how does it work in both ways? Simple. As I said, there are not very many mechanisms of aging. If you interfere with one of them, you can expect other things elsewhere. The very fact that such a product has such a varied result in mice and rats shows us the power of this kind of approach to science of aging. Um, and, uh, and we will see new generations of these kinds of therapies. Can you imagine walking down the street and not being sure whether the woman is 95 years old or 19? Maybe a little fanciful, but it, it, it is not beyond the possibility in the future that we will have the capacity to, all ki to do all kinds of rejuvenating uh, processes. Uh, can we change someone's hair color permanently? Yes, this is history. I'm, t I'm not telling you the future. I'm telling you history. You tell me the future after this presentation is over. Perhaps you'd like to come to a view about what you think about the future. But this is history. This was done five or ten years ago. You just make a virus. Uh, you program it to, uh, to attack hair cells. You insert the, the genetic code to, um, to change the hair color. The virus is defective, so it can't replicate. And you just uh, shampoo your hair once, and then uh, you get a permanent color change. It's been done in mice and rats, as I say. Um, aging hair follicles, there's nothing new about that. We're able to uh, regrow a head of hair using simple cloning technology. Um, can we grow new teeth inside someone's body? Yes, we can. It's already been done. We've grown new, new teeth in mice from nerve cells, from gum tissue. So could you go to the dentist and come back with new teeth growing inside your own mouth that have been derived from your own cells? Sure. I don't think that's a particular challenge for us in the future. Certainly my children will find that uh, to be the case in their lifetime, and maybe everyone here in this room, who knows. Uh, what about... Um, uh, can we rebuild the heart of someone after, after a heart attack? Yes, we can. Uh, can we do it using adult stem cells? Sure, we can. Uh, can we uh, use bone cells to do it? Yes, we can. It's the best source of, um, of, of, of adult stem cells we can find uh, because they're so plentiful and easy to get hold of. We've been using technology to separate out adult stem cells for bone marrow transplants for 25 years now, so it's quite routine. Has it been done? Of course. I'm telling you history. You tell me the future. We are seeing up to 85% improvement in heart function after heart attacks using hearts rebuilt using bone marrow stem cells. And what about stroke? Can we rebuild someone's brain after stroke? Yes. I'm telling you history. You tell me the future. We are already doing it in mice and rats, and we are able to rebuild significant parts of the brain after uh, structural damage using adult stem cells. There have also been many experiments using embryonic stem cells. But as you will know, if you've been following the great uh, debates about embryonic stem cells or, ad or adult stem cells, we're discovering that we can get almost every benefit we wish in terms of flexibility, dynamism, and capacity to, uh, to, to seed new tissues, with, uh, old tissues with new, t with, with new tissue, uh, that we're seeing almost all of these benefits can be derived from the adult stem cells, and you can find them in skin, pancreas, brain. Oh, by the way, if you want a nice bit of brain to repair your brain with, you don't even have to go inside the head to go and get it. You can use your own nose. Why? Because there's a little bit of your nose which you used on Christmas Day to smell the Christmas pudding, uh, and you used to drink uh, a glass of beer. It's all your smelling apparatus. It's the olfactory bulb, as you well know, and it's a tiny bit of your brain. It comes down through a tiny hole in your skull, and it's sitting there waiting to be harvested. If you don't mind losing your, your sense of smell, we can get um, millions of, of adult stem cells, your stem cells, which are capable of repairing your spinal cord or your brain from the, from the inside of your nose. Have we done it already? Yes, I'm telling you history. You tell me the future. 
Um, we know that your brain repairs itself daily. Why do we know that? Because we have, we, I'm sure you remember the case of the woman with the male brain. What was that? It was a woman who uh, had um, a bone marrow transplant uh, because she was dying of, of, uh, of leukemia. She had a, a, a lethal dose of irradiation. It zapped all her bone marrow. They wiped it out. She would then have died of an immune deficiency. What happened? Well, she had a good tissue match from a, a man who very kindly consented to, to give a bit of his bone marrow to her. It was put inside her body. It reseeded her bones. And uh, it rebuilt her immune system. Uh, and at the end of it, uh, she died uh, uh, some years later. But she gave her body to medical research. And they, uh, when they looked inside her brain, it looked just like a normal brain. They, they, they started to take slices. They tested it. They looked it out under the microscope. And they were astonished because they saw a large number of brain cells, only a very small minority of the brain cells, but a large number of them were XY chromosome cells. They were male cells, and they had come not from her body. They had come from her bone marrow. So what we learned from this woman is that her brain had been seeded perhaps almost every day, regenerated a little bit every day. What by? Well, by her bones. That's an extraordinary thing. I'm telling you history, you tell me the future. So that's why scientists are now interested in finding ways to make these bone marrow cells aggressive, release themselves in millions after a stress injury, and, and do a major rebuild without uh, any intervention whatsoever, apart from maybe a couple of injections. Interesting. And what about cures for eyesight? Well, I've talked to someone at Harvard Medical School who thinks that he will soon have the technology to rebuild the back of the eye, the retina, uh, using adult stem cells. Extraordinary to think that we could restore blindness in up to 10 million people in America alone today who have macular degeneration as a result of simply getting old. Uh, and then finally, there are some creatures which do not seem to have a normal tick-tocking clock. The processes of aging which are inside your body and mind, and as we've seen, are, are common mechanisms in just about every life form, do not seem to operate in the normal way. And I'm thinking of a rockfish, uh, uh, some kind of humpback whales. Um, you could look at the turtle, which lives for ages, the parrot, which is, has a very long life expectancy. But just think about the rockfish. There is a whole project in America called the Rockfish Project. Why? Because they are studying two kinds of rockfish. Most rockfish who die in about 10 or 20 years, normally of old age. And the others, which can go on living for 100 years or more. They're also studying humpback whales, where a small community of humpback whales seem to be living for up to 200 years, whereas the rest die in 20 years. Tick-tocking clocks, but ticking at a different rate. In fact, in these slow-ticking clocks, scientists so far have been unable to find any evidence of normal aging processes whatsoever. So you say, well, are these immortal? No, they're not immortal. They die of lots of things. They die of infection. They die of attack by parasites. They die of attack by predators. They die of being harpooned or eaten. Uh, but they don't die of furring up of their arteries. They don't die because their immune systems are knackered. They don't die because their repair systems are just completely worn out. They die of, as I say, non-aging processes. Now, there's very, in, in a very interesting thought, because Suppose the humpback and the rockfish and the turtle and the parrot are using the same tree. Suppose that we find that it's genetic. It has to be genetic, doesn't it? I mean, these fish are, are eating the same food. They're in the same water. They're in the same world, the same environment. It's got to be genetic. So if we find the gene, what do genes do? They simply make proteins. If we find the gene, we can find the protein. If we find the protein, we could put it in one of your drinks. Well, actually, maybe not. Maybe it wouldn't quite get in the bloodstream. We don't know. Maybe we could find something to stimulate that particular gene. You can see the possibilities here. So we are on the edge of something quite extraordinary. And I would be very interested in a straw poll of hands right now in this room. And I will benchmark you. I will tell you the results from other organizations uh, collectively, worldwide. 
I just like you to put your hands up now. If you say, I've told you the last three years of history. You tell me the next 30 years of the future, in your view. Put your hands up if you think. I mean, we're going to know the answer of what these genes are in the next 18 months. We're going to know what proteins these genes make probably in the next five years. Okay, put that aside. I've told you history. You tell me the future now. This is your moment. I want you to tell me if you think that in the next 30 years, it, might be, it may be possible to add five years of life expectancy to every single person in this room as a result of these kinds of technologies. Have a look around. Well, I can tell you that almost every government actuary in the whole world would, 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 would put their hands up to that question. Just about every person that I've lectured to on these issues would put their hands up in response to such a question. If, some, if one of you here is out uh, of Graham, I, I think you're probably uh, the most senior person here today. Is that right? Um, let's, well, uh, and, and, and we could go right to the other extreme of, 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 uh, of the baby that has yet to be born to Deborah in six months' time. Uh, but let's go in the middle. Let's take someone who is, um, you, okay, s someone who would be perhaps in their 40s. Who would that be? Okay, you don't want to reveal your age, and, and James doesn't want to help me out. He hasn't got your birth certificates anyway. All right, but uh, the fact of the matter is, let's suppose um, uh, that uh, you're 40 years old. 40 years old. The government is going to give you a life expectancy of a further 80, uh, 40 years, let's say, roughly 40 years. But actually, that's skewed. Did you know that because you work for GlaxoSmithKline, we add on five years to your life expectancy? Put your hands up if you knew that. Do you know why? The reason, of course, is because you're in the upper demographic group. You're educated, etc. How uh, you take care of yourselves, um, and uh, 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 compared to people in the in the housing state just around the back here on the Haverfield Estate, which is eighty. Uh, I, I live I live two miles from here. Uh, on the Haverfield Estate, which is in that direction, uh, I tell you the life expectancy is seventy years. Why? Drugs, alcohol, um, overweight, um, lower social demographic group, poor education. Um, oh. Every social problem you can imagine. Life expectancy average 70 years. So for every man down there or woman down there with a life expectancy of 70 years, we've got to add some years onto the people in this room just to keep the national average correct, right? Okay, so now we see why we add on five years because you work. So now we've given you 40. If you're 40 years old, we've given you 45 more years, right? You've already told me, most of you think, uh, that you will add an extra five years on in the next 30 for everyone who's, who's got 30 years left anyway which is probably most of you, even Graham. Yes. Okay, so, uh, so, right, so that's, now we're saying you, you had, uh, if you're 40, you had 40 years already left. We've just started on five for the GlaxoSmithKline effect. That gives you 45 more years. But you've told me that in the next 30 years, uh, anyone who's got 30 years of life expectancy left will have another five anyway because of medical advances, right? So that gets us to 50 years. So now we've got a 40-year-old with 50 years of added life expectancy, but it gets more interesting than that. You see, uh, science grows exponentially. You know that uh, medical research is doubling, what, every eight weeks, is it? What would you say? Um, it would be interesting to discuss it. Uh, to say that the amount of medical knowledge that we have is doubling every eight weeks, 12 weeks, well, even if it's only Moore's Law, which is doubling every 18 months, as it is for IT, as you know, that's still a spectacular increase if you look over 30 years. It's something, I forget, it's like a 20,000% increase or something. I cannot even work it out. So uh, we're dealing with a phenomenal increase. And, and what it means is that if you've got 40 years left of life, almost all that could be possibly done to help you live for longer will be discovered in the last five years of those 40 years. So we've already added, what, what was it? Um, we, had, uh, we had 40 years to start with, and then we added, uh, what was it, five on for GlaxoSmithKline. We added... Uh, um, uh, 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 five more years just for general science in the next 30 years. That gives you 50 years. The next question I have is, what on earth is going to happen in the following 20 years to this 40-year-old? Put your hands up if you think that in the following 20 years the individual may actually benefit from some other spectacular advance. This is sometime between now and 2060 some spectacular advance that could add another five years. Put your hands up if you think that could happen. Well, there we are. And I have to say, you are in common with every other audience I've spoken to. So we just added on another five years. 40, 
50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 95. So now we're seeing a person with an average life expectancy of uh, 95, and it's probably higher. Because in the last five years of that, you might find some other step. Now, I'm not saying we're going to stop the tick-tock of your clock, but all I'm saying is the actual uh, actuarial forecasts on which your pensions are being based at GlaxoSmithKline are completely crap. We know that. It's in the papers almost every day. I've been talking about it for the last 10 years. Um, and the fact is that uh, in Japan alone, the Japanese government is increasing life expectancy forecasts for women by 12 months every four years. That's crazy. It's completely unprofessional. Why can't the government tell the truth and just make a decent forecast and, uh, and, and lift up life expectancy by 10 years in one go? Why do they have to do it every four years by one year? The answer is because they're scared. And Gordon Brown in this country is scared and the chairman of GlaxoSmithKline is scared. Why is that? The reason is because the truth is so uncomfortable. For every year we have just added on to each of you in this room, we have created an extra pension deficit of up to 5% in your pension fund allocations, and we've damaged further your stock price. Um, and, that, and that is a very serious thing. You start adding five years on or 10 years on. You can't do it. So if Gordon Brown insisted on it being done, it would wipe out stock values across the UK and the same would happen in other nations as well. Governments are not interested in speculating about the true liabilities of their National Health Service pension fund or the local Ealing Council or Brentford Council here, uh, their pension funds. So you can see that we all know it's true, but none of us can talk about it. But when it comes to product planning, it's truly fascinating, astonishing. What it means for the future is that if we said that 65% of all health spending um, is going to be in those over the age of 65 in the future, you can see that that's an underestimate. If we said that 75% of all wealth in the UK and the US will be owned by those over the age of 65, we can say that is an optical illusion compared to what's going to happen in the future. 